I'm Agnes from Tainer Elite Education Center. In this video, we're going to discuss some common pain points that IB Math students have, and we're going to teach you how to solve those questions effectively. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve questions for um, sequences and series effectively in IB exams. There are two winning key techniques that we're going to cover, um, and they are techniques that not only you should um, be aware of, be, but also be able to master and apply in the exams. Okay, so the first winning technique is to express the knowns and unknowns in the question in terms of three quantities. And these three quantities are U1, the first term, and then the common difference or the common ratio, depending on whether you are um, dealing with an arithmetic sequence question or a geometric sequence. Okay, and then the third term, uh, and the third quantity is n, the number of terms or the or the number of term that you are at. Okay, so in order to demonstrate how to apply this technique, we are going to work on a sample question um, in the IB uh, past paper ex um, uh, past paper question, and this is from two thousand and sixteen. So in a geometric sequence, the fourth term is eight times of the first term, and the sum of the first 10 terms is 2,557.5. Okay, and the question asks for the first uh, for the tenth terms in this sequence. So first of all, there are two pieces of information given. So um, they're all given in words. So let's try to try to represent them using symbols first. So for the first piece of information, the fourth term is eight times of the f first term. That means U4, that represents the fourth term, is eight times of the first term. Okay, so that is the first piece of information. The second piece of information is the sum of the first 10 terms, which is denoted by S10 equals to 2557.5. Now we have two equations um, to work on. For each of these equations, we're going to rewrite them, okay, in terms of u1 and then r because it's a common, uh, this is a geometric sequence question, and also n. So let's look at the first equation. Um, these are the formulas that you need to know, and um, they're also given in the formula booklet, um, the, these formulas that you can use directly. Since this is a geometric sequence question, um, we're going to express U4 using this formula, which is U1 times the common ratio to the power of n, which is 4 in this case, minus 1, equals to 8 U1. Okay, now we want to simplify this equation a little bit more. It's very um, it's very safe to to deduce that u1 cannot be zero in this case because if u1 is zero, then the entire geometric sequence is just um, contains zero uh, contains terms that are zero only, and that is pointless. Okay, so we can just assume that u1 cannot be zero. That means we can divide both sides of the equation by u1, and simplifying this equation gives r to the power 3 equals to 8, so r equals to 2. This is the first equation done. Now we can focus on the second equation. So with the formula here, for the sum of the first n terms for a geometric sequence, S10 can be rewritten as u1 times 1 minus 2, which is the common ratio that we've just found, to the power 10, which is n in this case, over 1 minus 2. So with some rearranging, we get that u1 equals to this. So if we plug this into the calculator, we get that u1 equals to negative 2.5. Okay, so by now we found the common ratio and the um, first term. Uh, from the two pieces of information given. And we've done so by expressing those information in terms of the first term and the common ratio and the uh, number of terms. Okay, so let's try to continue to um, solve this question to find the tenth term in this sequence. The tenth term is U10. 
which by the formula is expressed by u1 and the common ratio time uh, to the power of n minus 1 right and now we can plug numbers in u1 is negative 2.5 and the common ratio is 2 n is 10 and then we just plug this into a calculator to get that u10 is negative 1280 okay so um, this is how we use this point okay by expressing everything in terms of um, u1 and the common difference on the common ratio and n and then try to solve the equations to get the answers that we want so this is the first technique that you should know now let's talk about the second technique the second technique is about using fundamental meanings of some technical terms okay so what does this mean um, there are many fundamental meanings that we always miss out for example we already know that in an arithmetic sequence you get the next term by adding a common difference to the previous term right Okay, so here, if this is an arithmetic sequence, then you plus the d to get the second term, and then plus the d to get the third term, etc., etc. And in a geometric sequence, you get the next term by multiplying the first term, or the previous term, with a common ratio. Okay, so in both cases, we'll have expression that looks like this. We well, know that u2 is just u1 plus d, and here ur is u1 times r, u1, uh, u2 is u1 times r. But one form of um, expressing the same equation that we always forget about is this. d stands for difference, and difference is obtained by doing subtraction, okay? And ratio is obtained by doing division. So besides expressing the relationship from a term with its uh, next term and the common difference or common ratio in this form, we can also express the relationship in this form as well. Okay, And this is the point that we're going to apply in this question, which is also a past paper question from the IB exam. So in this question, three consecutive terms in a geometric sequence they are x minus 3, 6, and x plus 2. That means we have these three terms here. They are obtained by multiplying the previous term with a common ratio. And from what we've just talked about, we know that the same relationship can be expressed in a quotient form. So this term divided by this term gives you the common ratio, and also this will give you the common ratio. So combining these two equations together, you see that both of these fractions they equals to they equal to the common ratio. That means that these fractions equal to each other. Okay. So with just very simple cross multiplication, we can um, get a quadratic equation. That looks like this. And we factorize, sorry, to solve that x equals to 7 or x equals to negative 6. Okay, and this is consistent with how the question is asked because they asked us to find the possible values. Okay, that means you must have at least one answer. If you have only one, then you must be doing something wrong and you should check um, your steps. Okay, so this is how we apply the second technique. Let's recap the two points again. The first point is to express the knowns and unknowns in terms of these three quantities. Okay, and then the second point is to be able to use some fundamental meanings of the technical terms that we usually see. So I hope this helps you um, prepare for your exam and the questions and answering questions in um, sequences and series. I hope you have found the explanation helpful. 
You can check out the links here or subscribe to our channel for more IV teaching videos.